have built a few Gauge 1 live steam locomotives so far. This is the next one I'm going to build and it's going to be scratch built and it's going to be live steam and I hope you find the series of following videos interesting to watch. Hello and welcome to part 13 of the Gauge 1 GWR Prairie Tank scratch build. Uh, this episode I'm going to start looking at the smoke box and the petticoat arrangement and I appreciate the smoke box is going to sit on the front of the locomotive like so it's going to sit around there. Now also on the smoke box what we also need is something called the saddle. Now I've made the saddle already just show you the saddle here and it's a fairly fairly simple arrangement it's basically just made up of four pieces cut from a material from this brass strip so cut your four pieces like so and then they're then riveted together to form this uh, this box shape to form the box shape here and then I put on two sort of flanges if you will to support the to support the smoke box. Uh, the saddle drops into here and as you saw on on the on the views there there's some there's some cutouts I've put in and these drop over the pipes or the inputs that lead to the cylinders. I think we've seen these before. Let me show you them again. These pipes here. That's your input into the steam chest. I'll turn it around that way. And these are the the exhaust, the exhaust pipes. Now uh, what goes on there are some little little T pieces that I've uh, that I made. Give you a look there, there's some T pieces here. And these are fairly straightforward, fairly straightforward to make a little piece of hexagonal bar threaded, hole drilled in, and then this piece of brass tubing fitted in and silver soldered. So this piece is for the is for the input. This is the steam inlet. And this fits on this fits on here. And likewise the one for the the exhaust for the steam out. Again, it's a very simple T piece. So this is what these little fancy shapes and cutouts are for. Now as I mentioned, the saddle fits on here and it locates. So the smoke box will sit on the saddle like that. Now what I was able to do from these pipes and able to determine the positions we need some holes drilled in here and that's going to be a hole for the for the if you like the petticoat pipe to come out through the chimney and so I was able to get those positions the hole positions from where these pipes sit. So that's where we're up to at the moment. So what we'll do now is I'll just make the, the holes and make the hole for the petticoat pipe. All right we're set up in our, in our drilling machine now and so even now I've got these uh, holes, the, the center points marked off for these holes, I still need to be fairly careful on drilling this I'm just going to start with a just going to start to make this part this um, spot mark a little bit bigger now you can see that there I'm not sure if the camera is picking that up but I've made these holes a little bit more pronounced 
Uh, you can probably see them there. That's just because they're a little bit more pronounced there. For the real drill hole size, is this is the this is the size of the drill that we're going to be using. And if I were just to go in as is, this drill would not be able to centre properly, and there's a good chance it would probably dance around. Uh, that's just to ensure the the flutes of the drill pick up on the um, on the the sites that we've marked out. Let's get this in. Okay. This is our first one. Again, we still have to use a little bit of care on this because there's a very good chance, if we're not careful, it will snatch. There's only two flutes on this. As soon as it bites through this, this thickness, there's a good chance it will snatch. So we need to proceed carefully. Okay, that's the first one through. Uh, you can see by just stepping through the drills gradually, we're able to drill this hole out fairly painlessly. So we're not taking big chunks of material out at a time. That reduces the risk of the drill snatching and making a right mess of the hole that we're drilling. So I'm only stepping up in um, 60 fourths of an inch. Uh, you could probably maybe take a chance and drill a, a slightly bigger size. Depends how cautious you want to be. Let's see how it shapes with this one. Okay, that's still pretty good. So the bigger the drill diameter gets, the more cautious we have to be. So there's about eight or nine steps on here, really just to open this hole out carefully. final hole with the last largest drill that we need to. I've not drilled it out to the true diameter which is half inch because it needs to be a fairly precision fit for the copper pipe to fit in there so I've drilled this hole a 64th under size and I'm going to use a, uh, a half inch reamer just to give this hole a, a proper size and finish. We've got our drilled hole almost up to size and you can see now I've fitted the reamer so I'm really just going to finish this off just with the reamer to give it its final size and it'll give us a perfectly nice round hole ready for our next stage there we go for the petticoat or the, the, the the pipe that goes through to form the petticoat, this half inch pipe there's a nice snug fit in there and it's going to be silver soldered in. But the next thing I will do is cut this pipe to length and I will anneal it and I'll slightly form a, a, a flanged end on there. Let's get our torch lit. And in order to flare this copper tube out, you need to anneal it, that is just to soften it. So all we have to do is heat this up to a nice orange, a nice bright orange. And then we let this cool down naturally with normal air temperature. So I'll just let this cool down normally. I've just got a, a centre fixing the tailstock and I'm just going to ease it round. Just ease the centre in. I know the camera is picking that up but it's actually starting to flare this end out. You don't need to do it too much because I want to buckle 
copper further along a little bit at a time okay here we are you can see after our first attempt we've now started to get a, a flare on this uh, what's going to be the petticoat so I need to do a little bit more so I need to soften that copper up again and just repeat that process quick explanation of what it does if you imagine this is looking in the smoke box and we have a basically the pipe there and this pipe comes down and it's flared flared like that and the chimney sits on there, that's all the chimney that sits there. Now the idea of the petticoat is you have a blast pipe draw that like that, that comes up that, that has the exhaust from the cylinders and what the blast pipe does is blasts a jet of steam every time the exhaust comes out it blasts steam of this petticoat and the petticoat catches this blast of steam and on the real things or any steam engines that's what you see as you see the puffs of steam coming out it's a blast of steam coming up here caught in this petticoat and coming out the top what this also does as this blast of steam comes out it also creates a vacuum it's like vacuum in here and what this vacuum does is draw the flames the heat from the fire along the tubes Okay, here's our uh, petticoat pipe now in position in the smoke box. Now, as mentioned before, this is quite critical. The the depth on here, hold that right. This depth, this depth of the petticoat is quite critical and the length of this pipe as well obviously what's going to fit on here is the proper chimney the proper chimney shape will just fit over that but what is important is this height here now the drawings I have the official drawings I have or I've been working from are very vague and they give no indication of what that has to be but from previous experience and referring back to some of my other or the drawings I know that this is about the size it has to be so we're ready to silver solder this in position now all right we have it set up on our mini half and for soldering stuff like this when I where I can especially if I'm soldering tubes or something round I, what I'll what I normally do is make a little round piece take a piece of silver solder and make it into a circular shape so I can just slide that over the end and there, slide it over the end of our chimney, just push it down. So I've got a silver solder, if you like, silver solder bead sitting in there all the way round our tube. So I can just dab some flux on here now and do it carefully because the solder flows where the flux is and where the heat is. So I'm trying to, let's use something a bit more delicate, trying just to keep the flux, trying to keep the flux local just around this area. I don't want this, we don't need solder running away all over the place. And just gently heat this up now and let the heat do the work. You just see the silver solder starting to melt. Okay, here's the smoke box now, all, all soldered up. Um, what I've done, just to for the next stage, uh, we're going to fit the saddle 
to the smoke box or basically the smoke box of the saddle and we've got to line that up. So what I've just done is just put this uh, inlet pipe back on fixed onto the cylinders and that's in its set position. So now we can drop our saddle on top and this will help us align the smoke box and that will give us the the positions were to just spot through to make the mounting holes. Okay, here's the uh, smoke box now fitted to the saddle. That's all on, the screws all spotted through and tapped. So, using our guide, basically with the steam inlet pipe, that just lines up nicely onto the onto the onto the main chassis so that's looking quite reasonable that